Hi everyone, welcome back to this um, video from um, series from Seasons by Hannah Carlson. Now today we are going to have a look at her blouse and also this bit around here. We'll start with the blouse. Now I did say I wanted it to be white. I'm going to have a go at putting some white, if I can find my white. Here it is. Um, I'm just going to sharpen it on it to see how it looks because it's quite cream. The paper's quite cream, so I thought we would have a look and see if we can make white work or not. There we go. So here's my white, sorry, sharpen the name on. And I'm just going to go into these areas here and just put down some white. It's not really showing up as any lighter than the colour that the paper is, which is a bit disappointing because I thought it might be a bit lighter, but it doesn't look, I can't see it at all. Okay, well that's not going to work is it? I think, I had thought I could do it in a light grey with some, but I'm not sure that's going to work either because of all the metallic silver. So I think what we're going to have to do is pick a different colour and I'm thinking maybe a very light pink. This, maybe this um, deco pink might work. I don't know if you can see that. I think we'll do this instead. So I'm going to just put down, I've got to try and colour over the top of that white. Put down a really light layer of deco pink. And I'm thinking it might be a little bit darker where these little pieces are overlapping. Now I'm thinking that because there's white under this, it's going to be much lighter. When I come down here, there's no white underneath, so it's going to be a little bit darker. So I need to be a little bit aware of that when I'm colouring it. That I need to take even more care to keep it really pale. There we go. It's a bit easier not colouring on top of white. I'm sorry I did that white, made that mistake. But I'm sure you can all manage. There we go. So that bit's quite pale. I thought maybe make these bits a little bit darker. So even though I'm sticking with the same colour, I shall put down some more layers and get a darker colour. It's rather pretty, this colour I've always thought. I'm going to try and get fairly even coverage if that's possible. Now, those little pieces on this, I'm thinking um, I need to do in the mulberry that we did the um, original um, ribbon in. I think it will work best if we go back to that colour. But what I'm also thinking is I might do some mulberry on these stripes um, to sort of tie it together. But, uh, and maybe on the buttons as well. I'll have a look at the buttons in a minute and we'll get a bit closer. My hand's not over the top of them. Let's have a look. So we've got a stitching on the button and we've got the button itself. Mm. We could potentially leave them white or we'll leave the stitching white. It's always a risk when you leave something white, especially something intricate like that that um, it looks like you've just forgotten. So, uh, I don't know. I'll have to think about that. I don't want it to look like I just forgot to do it. And there is a place for white, you know, like up here, which didn't work. But, um, <laughs> I have seen um, some beautiful things coloured in white. I would like to learn how to do it, but uh, I need to find some videos. I suspect there's a Chris Cheng, I bet she's coloured things in white, but I think 
part of the key for white is to have a dark background and then it stands out already before you even start colouring. If you try and do white on white paper then you're just going to end up looking like it's just very white. <laughs> right, mulberry. Here's our mulberry. We're going to do this bit of the collar first. I think I'm just going to do it a little darker and then fade. A little darker here and then fade it down. And hopefully that will add to the illusion of this being slightly higher, sort of raised. Now for these I'm going to do them quite pale. I don't want them really dark. Quite like them in white to be honest. But yeah, I'm too worried about them looking like I've forgotten them. If I leave them white. There we go now. Thinking I'm going to do the thread on the buttons in a dark mulberry, like that. And I'm going to return to my deco pink, but put it a bit darker in the uh, light on there. So it looks like you're trying to slightly camouflage the buttons against the blouse. Buttons tend to match clothes, don't they? There we go. Now we've got this bit up here to do. Oops. Just can we get it all in? I'm going to have to come out hard. There we go. So my first um, decision I have made is the blue. I'm going to use the true blue. I'm trying to find it. Is it that one? Yeah. For the flowers. So here's our true blue, which is her eye colour. And we're going to use it for these floors. So I'm going to basically put it a bit darker near the base and then lighter towards the tip of the flower, like that. Keep it quite simple. I'm not going to use any of the ultramarine like I used on her eyes to add some detailing. I just want this one colour. I think it's very pretty. And I just want to keep it really simple. There we go. Um, where are we next? We're here. So all the flowers are going to be done in the same way. Now I see we've got these little critters. What is this? It's, it's like a little wasp. Mm, colour is tricky. I think I might just do some different silvers for him because I don't want to go with the sort of gold route because we've got no gold. But what do I do for this greenery? Because, you know, we've got no green in this picture yet. So I'm a little bit hmm, confused or wondering, pondering what to do with it. So as I go around, I shall have a think. I'm wondering, is there a, a bluey green that we could use? Um that wouldn't look too different. I know we've got like the aquamarine, I think it's a bit too blue. But maybe, um, maybe the grass green might work. Or the true green, spring green. I think the true green might be a good one. Hmm. I haven't got a swatch. I'm just trying to use my brain to remember these things. Not always a good plan, especially my brain. Right, there are simple flowers and I hope they sort of work with her eyes. Now her um um is that the ultra yeah now part of her eyes done in ultramarine I'm gonna use the ultramarine for these circles and then do all of the oh, I'm getting blurred vision. Hopefully I'm colouring them correctly. And 
Now you could do these circles in a glitter pen or a metallic pen. They can help make it look all a bit more magical. Um, I just thought I wanted to pull in that darker blue a little bit, but just not into the actual florals. I think I might do the bugs before the green. Just give me a little bit longer to decide what colour I might do them. The green that is, not the bugs. I'm going to do the bugs simultaneously, I think, so that I um, do them the same. I think there's two. Yes, there is. Just checking. So those I've just blocked, and you can always put a bit of glitter pen over those or anything you want. Okay. Bugs. Lightest colour, 20% cool grey. I'm going to use this for the wings, and I'm just going to go right over the wings with this. Nothing special at all. I always think they're very delicate. They shouldn't be too dark. And I'm just checking while I'm doing this that our bugs are both the same, which they are. Next, I am going to use the 90% cool grey. So we're jumping right up. And we're going to do the bug's feet and her eye and eyes with that and again just blocking it in as best you can in such a small area there we go okay now I think I'm going to go down to this one whoops this is the 50% cool grey and I'm going to do the head and the back of the eye and then every other stripe and then the last one I think I'm going to use this one this is the 70% cool grey for the other stripes I haven't done anything too special. They are really tiddly. Tiddly. There we go. Right, now our uh, foliage. I'm really worried that... Um, let me have a look. See, the sage green is an option. It's quite grey, you see. Is that what it's called? No, the jade. That's what I'm going to use. The jade green. It's not the sage green. Oh, sorry. My sharpener is misbehaving. There we go. So here it is. Jade green. I'm just going to start colouring with a sort of medium pressure. And see how it looks. I think this is definitely the right choice sort of grey green I'm just colouring it in quite plain I'm not making any bits lighter or darker I'm not worrying about trying to make it exact either but just you know not worrying about light and shade or trying to make anything look too fancy it's quite small, particularly the stems, and I don't know if it needs to be too fancy, but I'm going to have a look when i finished. Now, I'm background-wise, I'm not going to do one. I don't think it needs it. Sometimes I like doing a background, I enjoy it. Sometimes I don't want to do it. Sometimes I'm just in the mood for doing it, you know, that sort of thing. But looking at this one subjectively, to be honest, it's a lot going on. I don't think it really needs one. You know. It's that, and the picture next to it hasn't got one either. So that's sort of influencing me too. 
if it was a scene, you know, with other things going on, then I would feel it would need one. But because it's just her, it's like a portrait, I don't think it necessarily needs anything going on in the background. Some people, yeah, they feel they always need a background. Um, I remember on a book, book flip through video once, I had a comment from someone saying, are you going to go back through and put backgrounds on all of your pictures? And I was like, no. You know, I do more backgrounds now than I used to, but uh, I really honestly just don't think this one needs one. And I think there's quite some skill in leaving it alone, you know. I think with all art it can be quite difficult to know when to stop, you know, keep fiddling here and there, changing that, tweaking this, it can go on forever. I've just noticed there's a little circle I haven't coloured in. So uh, yeah, there's. you have to know when you're done. And I have ruined many a picture by adding a background in the past. I'm getting better at judging whether I'm in the mood for doing one and whether one would work. You know, sometimes uh, it just doesn't need it. Sometimes it does, but you have a go and you ruin it because you haven't thought it through or you were tired or whatever. So, and if you're scared of background, some people really are. They're like, I've done this picture and I'm really scared of putting a background on because I think I might ruin it. Firstly, you probably won't. Um, but secondly, um, try doing a background first then you'll be less nervous about ruining any uh, a page you put a lot of effort into because you haven't even started it yet and you won't ruin it anyway right there is that now I'm just having a think I think it needs a little bit of something I'm just trying to decide on what I'm thinking this I'm going to grab the peacock green I'm just going to sharpen it and what I want to do is just use a little bit of this peacock green on the tips of each um, like that just a tad Have a look in the camera. Yeah, that's better. And uh, just do that through. Now, I used to have the habit of always using a glitter pen over my insect's wings to make them look a bit more, um, what's the word, see-through and shiny. That's something... I am actually considering doing on this one. I've got a see-through glitter pen. It's a Sakura number 700. You buy it, you can buy it on its own. It's not in the glitter pen set. Well, not in the ones available in the UK. In the USA, you get quite a different selection of um, jelly rolls than we do in the UK which is quite interesting, but um, um, yes, you get the plain glitter pen with no base gel colour, it's more like a glitter glue, um, it comes on its own or in a pack of three, it doesn't come in with the all the ones that are in the glitter pen set, the Stardust set, all have a gel colour, so it might be silver, it might be orange, blue, green, whatever. There we go. I think that's just tidied it up, made it a little better. Um, I want to put in a little bit of shadow down here under our collar. So I'm using the 50% cool grey. I just want to put in a little bit around here. I feel like it would have a shadow. We've got shadow under it around the neck but we haven't got it down here because it wouldn't be sitting flat necessarily but I think we also need some shadow around these beads and the uh, 
actual brooch itself. Hopefully it doesn't look too much like I've just coloured out the lines. Hopefully it does look like shadow. And then the buttons, because they wouldn't sit completely flat, would they? Now, I'm also thinking that this strip here might have a bit of shadow each side because it's sort of... Well, actually, I don't know which side because it would only do up on one side, wouldn't it? It would open up. I don't know if I've done that the wrong side. It doesn't matter, does it? I'm going to just put a bit more in. Okay. And under here... there, in between each of these, look at them carefully to work out which one's overlapping which. The top as well. There we go. Yeah, I think she is done. Let us take the piece of paper out from behind, make her a bit larger so you can have a look and see all my pencils being messy on the side. There we go. She has done this last video. So I think it's been a little bit shorter than the others, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, there we go. She is all done. So uh, I hope that was okay. I hope that you enjoyed it. I did. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Um, I hope that you have a really super rest of your day and uh, pop in tomorrow to find out what I'm colouring then. I've got no clue. <laughs> so thank you so much and happy colouring.